and welcome to another video my name is Jackie if you guys are new here and today we are going through my whole fitness journey start to not finish but start to now and I'm just gonna go through everything obviously some things are gonna be more brushed over some things are gonna be more in detail if you guys have any questions about anything regarding my fitness journey drop them down in the comments below and I'm happy to answer anything but let's just hop right in so starting with my like early life I didn't really do much activities I did like a few weeks of soccer or like a dance class or something the occasional here and there but I didn't do anything ongoing or consistently the only thing I did ongoing or consistently was just gym class in school and that took me all the way up to high school really I basically was completely inactive other than like little kid playing like there was no structure until my freshman year of high school so freshman year of high school just as far as like height weight all that stuff i was five foot two and a half the same height that i am now i finished growing in eighth grade uh, but i weighed 115 at the time and me and a bunch of my friends decided we were going to play volleyball so i did that for my first two years of high school i have a couple of pictures of me playing volleyball I'll pop them in it was a good time i <laughs> I sucked, but I remember after a few weeks of my first volleyball season, I remember looking in the mirror and seeing what I thought were these lumps above my knees. And I said to my mom, I said, Mom, I don't understand what this is. I have these like weird lumps right above my knees. What the heck's going on? And my mom, I'll never forget my mom saying to me, Jacqueline, those are muscles. And she was talking about my quads. <laughs> And so I was 14, getting muscles for the first time, had no idea what the heck was going on. I was just doing volleyball for fun. So I did that and then also in high school. For my sophomore, junior, and senior years, I was on dance company and that was, again, loads of fun, but I got injured a lot. I got a lot of muscular injuries throughout all of that because I was doing dance, which is very jumping, impact, all of that stuff. And all those injuries, as well as back pain that started at the end of my first volleyball season was a result of what is called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It is a genetic mutation that causes a collagen deficiency in the connective tissue of my joints, meaning all of my joints are hypermobile. So this is why I got injured and in danced all the time because I was doing impact stuff and why the pain started in my back for me because essentially my spine was weaker because all of my joints are hypermobile and my back muscles overcompensated for how much work my spine couldn't do and my whole back just became this mass of muscle spasms and it was awful. I used to cry on a daily basis because of it. And if somebody poked me in the back, it was like, <gasps> like it was an insane reaction to just a simple like poke. But I got that diagnosis in fall of my sophomore year of high school towards the end of my sophomore year volleyball season. And so I got that diagnosis and basically they told me all I could do was take a leave on a daily basis and get a core. And I'm sorry to say I didn't take it that seriously at the time. I opted for just taking a pill every day instead of trying to actually actively do something about what was wrong with me. But that was my choice back then. And that's part of my dream. But after my sophomore year volleyball season, I did join a gym for two reasons. One was trying to stay fit for the volleyball season of the next year, even though I ended up not playing. And the other reason was because I was told to get a core and my mom was trying to help with that. So me and my mom started going to the gym and we just did classes, but it was very inconsistent. And I also kept eating like I was playing volleyball after that second volleyball season. And as a teenager who has no real education on nutrition and is hungry because <laughs> they're very active, I ate a lot and not very good food. And it wasn't totally awful because I've always had something in me that wanted to be healthy and I've done it wrong a lot. <laughs> I've done it wrong so many times, but you know, I still, I, I ate a little bit of healthy food. It wasn't, you know, chips all day, but I definitely, I probably did have chips on like a daily basis and just stuff like that. I was not very healthy and I gained a bunch of weight and 
by like spring of my sophomore year of high school, I was 145 pounds and technically that is overweight for me with my height and I definitely felt it. You know, I wasn't so overweight that people thought I needed to lose weight and all that. I, of course I did because I was a teenager who thought I was, I mean, I thought I was fat when I was 115 pounds. You know, we all have that teenager needing to change yourself kind of thing in you. But let me shift right here because this lighting is bothering me. But so I had gained that weight and it stayed there for a while. I did a lot of on and off inconsistent working out both in the gym doing classes with my mom as well as I dove into the world of YouTube workouts. I was, and this is nothing against any workouts that I watched, but I just, this is just my story, but I remember particularly watching the Blogilates workouts. I remember I would get so frustrated doing them, especially because Blogilates, it, for guys of you who don't know, is basically just Pilates videos on YouTube. But I remember getting so frustrated, especially because Pilates is very core based and I didn't have a core to speak of, <laughs> pretty much. And I just remember getting so frustrated. My neck would hurt all the time. I would try all the tricks, like trying to stick your tongue to the roof of your mouth to make your neck stop hurting and all that stuff. When it, it's really just that I didn't have the strength in my core to actually pr perform the proper contraction of my abs when I'm doing ab exercises. So they hurt and not in a good way. And I just had the months of on and off frustration, not getting anywhere, and it sucked, but that's part of what I did and I did it wrong. So then my senior year, I started to change things up. The boyfriend I had at the time was very into weightlifting and bodybuilding and all that stuff, and he started teaching me some of that. But again, it was very confusing and frustrating because doing things with proper form and understanding sets, reps, how much weight to use, how many reps to do in a set, how many sets to do, all that stuff stuff was so confusing to me and the boyfriend I had did not really take the time to slow down and explain all, all of that to me. It was just like, here, do this. But I did enjoy that style of training when I knew what was going on and it's still the way I love to train today. So I was working out primarily doing weightlifting but still the on again, off again, on and off the wagon sort of situation. But in my freshman year of college, I stayed on the wagon enough to lose 10 pounds and I sat at 135 and I felt a lot better. I had done a good amount of recomp, even though I had only lost 10 pounds, a lot more of that weight was muscle rather than fat. It was great, things were getting better, but then things started getting out of control. I was in music school and I developed some hand issues unrelated, but I could no longer play my violin and that put an insane amount of stress on me because I had to completely change my major, my school, all of that stuff. I was also in an extremely toxic relationship and my stress was insane. It was so crazy that in June of 2017, which is just after my freshman year of college, I had a seizure from stress. Just stress. And you guys will see me preach over and over and over again about the importance of keeping your stress down and what it does to your health because I know firsthand, I don't remember having the seizure, but waking up a half hour from where you last were, strapped down in an ambulance with people telling you you just had a seizure and asking you if you took drugs and all that stuff. When you didn't, you just left your little brother's birthday party. It's terrifying and that's what can happen. Not in, this isn't to scare you, but also it is to scare you at the same time, but to not letting your stress get out of control because that can happen and it's awful. It does huge things to your body. I mean, it's no wonder I only lost 10 pounds. I probably could have lost a lot more even with the on and off of the wagon because my stress was insane and stress makes you gain weight, hold on to weight. It tears your body up and it screwed my brain up so much that it went on overload and had a seizure but I'm sticking on that point a lot. So there was that. And then in the fall of that same year, I started noticing that whenever I ate, my stomach would get a little crampy afterwards. And I thought it was when I ate dairy, but I cut dairy out. It got better. Then it started happening even when I wasn't eating dairy, but it wasn't all the time. It was just kind of here and there, but it was always right after I ate. Symptoms like that, gastrointestinal sy symptoms. My stomach was hurting. I mean, to go number two too much the pain after I ate, 
exploding gas, all of that stuff. It started and it kept snowballing. And in June of 2018, almost a full year after I had my seizure, my body felt like it was like completely separate from me. Like I had no control over it. I had no idea what was going on. Anything I ate, it sucked. I had to live my life attached to a bathroom. And I was still again in that toxic relationship. And in June of 2018, after a particularly emotional day, I made a decision that has changed my life from that day on. And I decided that I was finally gonna do something for myself and get consistent with the gym. And I decided that I would never miss more than a week unless, you know, completely extenuating circumstances that make me that render me completely 100% unable to exercise and I have only broken that rule once since I made it and I will get to why about that later but only once and my life is completely changed and I really think that's where it all stems from but that was June 1st 2018 that I finally made that decision I can't say that it changed everything right away but I stayed consistent for months even though my body was still spiraling out of control I was still taking time for myself and with that again spiral out of control eventually in October of 2018 things were so bad that I called my doctor crying saying you need to give me something that my body can actually digest or you need to move up my appointment because in days I'm not going to be able to get out of bed. At this point was eating like four times as much food as I should in a day and my food was not getting digested like from here to the other end nothing nothing was happening. I might as well not even eaten what I've eaten and this is a little TMI here, but that's the reality of having Crohn's and I'm not really even getting that much into it. It was terrifying and I had no idea what was going on and they ended up moving up my appointment and I finally ended up getting diagnosed with Crohn's. It still baffles me that I have a mild case of Crohn's because it was awful and I can't even imagine what a severe case is. So if any of you are watching this and you have a severe case of Crohn's or just even anything like that, I can't even imagine what you're going through. And it's crazy because the me from a few years before this happened to me couldn't even imagine dealing with what I dealt with. And it's a lot. A lot of people look at me and think I'm a normal 22 year old who hasn't really had any health issues, but I was totally lost and out of control in my body. But I finally, I had finally figured out what was going on. And I finally started treating my body like I had Crohn's and I didn't want to take medication for it right away. And I still have not taken any medication for it. And I've gotten leaps and bounds and bounds and bounds and bounds better than where I was just a couple years ago. Finally getting that diagnosis really just allowed me to set the trail onto becoming pretty much a total health nut and just treating my Crohn's naturally. And while I'm not in remission yet, I am forever on the improvement trend. And as long as things stay that way, I think I'm gonna get there soon. So basically along with all of that, after getting my diagnosis, my mission became not to get a flat stomach, to lose weight, because I had the, the goal for years to finally lose the weight. My goal stopped being all of those things about how I looked and became, I need to get my body to digest my food. That's the goal, to get my body to digest my food. I ended up gaining 10 pounds through that process. And I didn't care. I, I didn't care one bit because I was getting better. That was the most important thing to me was getting better. Now we're in 2019. And then we've gotten to the first and only time I've ever broken my rule of never miss more than a week. In February of 2019, I got a concussion and I did not work out at all for a month. I think this is a completely valid reason for not working out. I was incapable of doing so and it's not something like you hurt your leg and you can still work out your arms my whole body i could not do any sort of exercise it was probably right around then but also during this whole process that just trying to get my body to digest my food that i did gain another 10 pounds and i was sitting at 145 again and I'm totally cool with that. My weight wasn't a factor anymore. I weighed myself to keep another set of data on myself and everything, but my goal was to getting myself to digest my food and I was achieving that. I was getting better. So the weight was a non-factor. But then in the spring of 2019, I finally started to figure it out. My body started working a lot better. I am insanely better now even than I was then, but I had improved enough to finally start seeing the physical changes of all the work I had done. 
because I've been working out for about a year at this point with really no physical change and besides actually gaining weight and that's not what most people do get when they start working out consistently. But I had a different battle to fight to start. I had something completely different to do before my body would even think about losing the weight. But I improved enough that my body was finally ready and from like May to November of 2018 uh, or of 2019, I lost 25 pounds and I dropped down all the way down to 120 pounds. This is where I ended last year. I was stronger than I've ever been. I was skinnier than I've ever been. You know, the latest weight since I was a tween. <laughs> But being skinny was never my goal. Even when I wanted to lose weight, I never wanted to be skinny. I never wanted to look like a twig because I'm a huge advocate of the saying strong is sexy. But I finally lost the weight to start getting towards optimal health. And I think that's important. A lot of people don't accept losing weight as a valid goal now, like you're tuning into some sort of level of toxicity if you want to lose weight. And the thing is, is that a lot of us have weight we do need to lose to reach an optimal health perspective, at least those of us starting our fitness journeys. I definitely needed to. I'm not saying I needed to be 120 pounds, but I needed to not be 145 pounds because I was not healthy. And if I got to 145 pounds now, I would know, because I'm never giving up this healthy lifestyle, but I would know that I was a healthy 145 and that would be a heck of a lot of muscle and it would definitely not be fat because that's what it was for me. And then I lost the weight, I was doing good. I I was a little um lighter than I ever thought I would be but you know okay and then quarantine hit and quarantine was as unkind to me as it was to everybody else I gained the quarantine 10 right along with pretty much everybody I know and that's totally okay mid-march to April was rough I utilized my don't miss more than a week uh rule a couple of times <laughs> but that's totally okay we all have rough times and that's why you create a bare minimum rule for when things go nuts you have something to fall back on so that you don't stop you've slowed down but you have not stopped 100 percent. and so i recognized this at the end of april and in may i decided i wanted to work out every single day of the month and i did that except for during a couple of finals and it really got me back in the groove and really excited about fitness again. Me and Bobby had created a routine of working out outside with a bunch of equipment he had in his garage. I got really inspired with health and fitness and during May is when I decided to become a personal trainer. It's crazy because it was right after a really low point too that I decided to become a personal trainer. And in mid-June, gyms opened back up again and I was back in the groove and I've just been coasting, really soaking up a lot of information, learning about how to train right. So I kind of kept how I was training the same uh, and not making any crazy differences as I was learning and waiting until I had really seen the whole picture, at least as much as of the whole picture as a one certification course can give you because obviously now that I'm a trainer, I don't know everything there possibly is to know about the human body, but I know a lot and it's helped me so much with my own training because I learned things like about how my flat feet were affecting my performance and how I really need to get shoe inserts now before I'm 50 and have bursitis <laughs> and it was just a bunch of things like that and I just accumulated that knowledge and I've started to apply it and now that I'm a personal trainer and just with that whole journey I've had all the knowledge I have now all the things I did wrong all the things I did right I just want to take that and give it to people because it's life-changing and that's my mission as a trainer now to help you get through that journey with as little of the trial and error as possible because there still has to be some of it because everybody is unique and every body is unique. So there's still trial and error, but knowing the right things to try is huge. And I didn't know those things before and now I do. So that's where we are today. That's my whole fitness journey. Again, if you guys have any questions, please do not hesitate to leave them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer anything. I probably skipped something that I'll think of later, but I hit most of the big points. But if you guys enjoyed, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and tick the notification bell so you don't miss any new content from me. I upload new videos every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. In the meantime, so you don't miss anything else from me. If you pop on over to Instagram and follow me, my username is jackies.journey underscore and I can't wait to see you there or in the next video.
Bye guys.